Hey, it's Tim. Today I'm going to make Bialis, and so this is what we're after. I'll show you, because there's a, there's a photograph. They're like, the, the recipe says that they're um, a kissing cousin to a bagel. And that's in Bread Illustrated by America's Test Kitchen. Um, so there you go. We're going to give this a shot. And I've weighed out the ingredients ahead of time to make my life easier. It takes minutes and it makes it easy. And there's a filling and it's going to be this. Olive oil, onion, poppy seed and salt. That gets dealt with later. we get got plenty of time for that because right now we're going to get this going. So there's room temperature water, 8 ounces or 237 grams. And into that we're putting uh, one and a half teaspoons of sugar, white sugar, and that just can sit and dissolve. Well, in the meantime, in the bowl of our stand mixer, I'm going to combine 337 grams of all-purpose flour. The cups and the ounces are listed in the description. So that's that, and to that I'm adding kosher salt, and I did uh, two teaspoons of kosher salt. I'm cutting the recipe that's in the book in half, because I'm only going to make six of these, not twelve of these. And that was a teaspoon of instant active dry yeast. And now, as usual, if you've watched any of these videos, the first few steps are almost always the same. Mix the dry ingredients in the stand mixer bowl, whisk to combine, put the dough hook on, put the mixer on the lowest speed, Add the liquid ingredients. Make sure the sugars hush. Make sure the sugars combine. Make sure it's melted. Uh, yeah, dissolved in the water. And then add the, all of the liquid to the dry ingredients. Do it all at once, but better to do it a little bit slowly. And after 30 seconds, stop the mixer, scrape down the bowl. Here we go. Stop the mixer. You know, it says scrape down the bowl, but really you kind of scrape it up, right? You pull it up from the bottom to make sure that the dry flour that's on the bottom gets lifted up so that the liquids mix with it. Not a big deal, but there you go. Get that done. And now another 90 seconds or so often takes less than that all we're trying to do is get this to a um, shaggy dough where all of the flour and all of the liquid are thoroughly combined we're doing that on low speed okay that's good it's all combined now we've got to build some structure in this dough so that it forms a dough not a not a mixture of flour and water which is all this is essentially at this point so now we'll turn it up to two it'll take about eight minutes I'm going to turn the video off and be right back all right so this has been going for eight minutes seven minutes and thirty seconds actually but if you can see down at the bottom of the bowl the dough is stuck to the bottom of the bowl still but the sides of the bowl are pretty much clean so that's that's what's going to happen here after eight minutes. So we can turn that off. And there's gluten that's been developed. Flour the surface a little bit. Turn the dough out. flour on their hands. So I said kissing cousin to a bagel. These This dough is not uh, super wet, so it's uh, fairly stiff right now. It's not as stiff a dough as it could be, but it's stiff. But it also doesn't have any fat in it. It doesn't. It used water for the liquid. There's no butter, no eggs, no oil. 
um, if we had used milk for the liquid, there's fat in milk, whole milk anyway, um, but there's no fat in this at all, so it'll, it'll have a texture similar to a bagel. Although America's Test Kitchen says that these come out uh, tender, but with the with the little bit of chew or bite that that they're supposed to have as a classic dish, this is a um, a bialis is a traditionally a, a, a Jewish dish that was hugely popular, as I if I understand it correctly, hugely popular in New York City at the beginning of the 20th century. And that's it. The dough is formed. I'm going to put a little bit of oil spray and I'm going to let this dough rise until it has doubled in size which should take about an hour or so I would reckon. While the dough is rising, I'm going to go ahead and prep the onion and get it ready. So this onion has to be peeled first and then minced or chopped fine. So people that have been to culinary school say that the way to chop an onion would be to leave the root end intact and then slice it as I just did this way and then this way. But if you leave the root end intact, it doesn't risk falling apart on you as you do it, which is what's happening to me. And I've never been to culinary school. I understand in principle what they're talking about but it's never seemed like that big a deal to me to do it this way instead. The truth is, as long as you end up with some finely chopped onions, the benefit to doing it, you know, sort of systematically is that you end up with even sized pieces of onion, which is helpful. It's also a bit faster if you do it methodically. So there's an onion. I need one and a half teaspoons of olive oil. That's close enough. And kosher salt, one half teaspoon. Wouldn't have been a bad idea to heat the pan first. So these are going to cook until they get some browning on them. There's a little bit of browning on the edges coming up. But I'm going to let them go for a few more minutes until they get a little bit more overall golden brown. I'm turning the heat off. The pan's going to continue to have heat in it. And we'll continue to cook these for 10 or 15 seconds anyway, and I think that's good enough. Poppy seeds. Onions and poppy seeds for later. It's been about an hour, and this dough has nicely doubled in size. I want to flour the counter and turn this dough out. And we're going to divide it into six pieces. And 
see what this weighs. Five seventy, so about ninety five grams a piece. And cut it roughly in half, and then cut each one of these in thirds. And see how close to ninety five grams a piece I can get. That's 97, that's pretty close. That's 95. That's 96. Okay. It's pretty successful. 93. 103. Which means this one's going to be about 83. 93. So this one's a little heavy. That's okay. They're going to get flattened out and whatnot, so it's not a big deal. Now, the recipe book says cover these while you do this, but it's not going to, I'm not going to take very long, so I'm just going to go for it. If you're less uh, confident in your ability to get this done with a quickness, then it's better to cover these with a plastic wrap while you do this step. And they're just going to go on a baking dish when they're done. So it's the nature of baking bread that, that there's a lot of repetitive stuff that happens. So for example, how do, you, how do you take a flat piece of dough and turn it into a ball? Well, you flatten it out a little bit more, punch down in the center with your thumbs, turn it in on itself, pinch. Now the top is relatively smooth. Put it down on a counter where there isn't much flour. Because if, if you put it down on a counter where there's flour, it's just going to slide everywhere, and the counter isn't going to grab it. And if the counter doesn't grab it, then as you drag your hand, which is, you know, like a, like cupped, it's not, it's a, you're not really pressing the dough, you're just using your hand to move the dough. And if there's too much flour on the counter, then you're going to have a problem because the dough has to stick a little bit in order to have the forming of a ball because the idea is that by sticking onto the counter it's pulling and turning it into a ball. It seals the bottom as it goes. Six. Obviously, if I was doing 12 of these, then yeah, I should have covered them because then it would take too long. But doing six, it's not really a big deal. Plastic wrap, a little spray oil. Loosely covered. Just so that they don't get dried out on top. They're going to rest for half an hour and then they get flattened out so that we can talk, call it Bialis and not dough balls. Thirty minutes are up. Now we're going to press these into five inch rounds, lightly flour these fingers, and 
the reason to let them rest for half an hour after forming them into, into the uh, balls is so that when we come back and do this, the dough isn't giving us very much resistance. Give it a chance to rest, let the gluten relax. And then once they're five inches around, which they're getting close, then I'm going to use this glass to press down into the center and flatten as hard as close to the mat as I can so that there'll be a ring around the edge and a well in the center to hold the onion mixture that has been cooked. And then they'll rest 10 to 15 minutes and then they'll go into a 475 degree oven for 15 minutes, maybe 20. Okay, so the instructions say grease the pan, I mean the glass, and flour it. So I've sprayed it with vegetable oil and now I'll flour it. Get rid of the excess. Awesome. And now press down all the way. Alright, I can dig it. Yeah, I could see these as being little tiny pizzas. So the recipe says that if you wanted to, at the, at the stage after the dough has been kneaded and it goes into the bowl for its first rest, that, that hour to hour long rest where the dough doubles in size, if you wanted to, when you put it in the bowl, rather than let it rest at room temperature for an hour to an hour and a half, you could put it in the refrigerator from 12 to... 18 hours. I don't think 24 hours would hurt it. Didn't hurt the English muffins that I just made. And so doing that would allow it to, um, you know, for example, this is a Saturday afternoon. I could have gotten to that stage and then did this part tomorrow morning and serve these for breakfast, say. Um, it's just nice to have that flexibility in the schedule when you're baking that you can do a, a good part of it ahead and then come back and finish it right before you want to eat. It says these are best eaten warm and there's a way to reheat them if you if you cool them, wrap them in foil when you want to reheat them, wrap them in foil and put them in a 350 degree oven for 10 minutes and they'll be fine. Um, but truthfully there's, there's nothing as, as uh, as satisfying as freshly baked bread out of the oven. So if you wanted to serve these at a breakfast or a luncheon or brunch or whatever, then you could time it by putting the dough in the refrigerator so it goes in before it does the first rise, before it doubles in size in, in that bulk, and then take it out and let it sit at room temperature for an hour to an hour and a half and then you come to the, you know, you come to the forming of the little balls and then do this part. So you just have a delay there. So these go back on the pan. They're ready to go in the oven. They go
got to rise for 15 minutes, maybe 20. Oven's going to be at 475, and we'll be ready to go. So I'll come back in a bit. Alrighty then, we're back, and there they are. I'm not super thrilled about some of this flour, but it'll it'll be gone. They're going into a 475 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm going to spin them around once while they're in there, halfway through, and uh, that should be delightful. So here they go. After 15 minutes at 475 degrees, turning the pan, rotating it once, halfway through, we've got six bialis. Bialis. This one kind of blow it out, but the rest of them uh, look pretty darn good to me. They look pretty darn good to me. They've got to cool for uh, 15 minutes or so, and then and then we'll see. But yeah, they look great, as far as I can tell. Sufficient time has passed. I believe. And now we shall cut one of these in half. And I'm going to pick this one because I think it's a good one. So, where's my bread knife? Here is my bread knife. Okay. Nice. Looks good. I like it. Let's see what it tastes like. Hmm. Yeah. That's good. Hmm. Yeah, that's tasty, and I, I get the, I get the kind of like a bagel uh, reference. It's um, again because there's no fat in the dough. It's uh, got some chew to it. It's not as, mm, pardon me. Mm, yeah, I like it. Just the right amount of salt in the dough, nothing on top. We'll go, the dough has a nice heft to it. The onions are sweet, cooked in the pan. Caramelized just a little bit. Brings out the natural sugars in the onions. Poppy seeds don't really have much flavor that I can tell, but they add a, a little pop, a little, a little, uh, like a little, a little crunchy thing happening. Hmm. Yeah, I really like this. I'm glad I made these. This is good. I would, I do think that this could be done as like sort of a mini pizza. You could uh, add mushrooms to the onions and then sprinkle some cheese on top and make like a, or even fill the, put uh, some regatta cheese down first and then some onions and mushrooms on top and, and make like a white pizza or do some dried tomatoes chopped in and sauteed a little bit with the onions and then some mozzarella cheese make little pizzas out of this. This is really good. So this one is super, super simple as far as ingredients go. Flour, water, salt, yeast, a little bit of sugar, and that's it. Onions, olive oil, poppy seeds, a little bit of salt for the filling, bam. I say get the ingredients and make yourself some Bialis. Thanks for watching.